First, can you clarify your position on the efficacy of hydroxychloroquine after you retweeted a video uh, making claims that it well, is that was, effective? I wasn't making claims. The, the recommendations of many other peoples and people, including doctors, uh, many doctors think it is extremely successful, the hydroxychloroquine, uh, coupled with the zinc and perhaps the zithromycin. But uh, many doctors think it's extremely good, and some people don't. Some people, I think, it's become very political. Uh, I happen to believe in it. I would take it. I, as you know, I took it for a 14-day period, uh, and uh, I'm here, right? I'm here. Uh, I happen to think it's uh, it works in the early stages. I think frontline medical people believe that, too, some, many. And so we'll take a look at it. But the one thing we know, it's been out for a long time, that particular formula, and that's what essentially what it is, the pill. And uh, it's been for malaria, lupus, and other things. Uh, it uh, It's safe. It doesn't cause problems. I had no problem. I had absolutely no problem. Felt no different. Didn't feel good, bad, or indifferent. I, and I tested, as you know. It didn't, it didn't get me, and it's not going to uh, hopefully hurt anybody. So we know from that standpoint, because it's been so many years, from a safety standpoint, it's safe. I happen to think, based on what I've read, I've read a lot about hydroxy. Uh, I happen to think that it has an impact, especially at the early years. There were some very good tests at uh, Ford, and the doctor from Yale came up with a very, very strong testament to it. There was a group of doctors yesterday, a large group, that were put on the Internet, and for some reason the Internet wanted to take them down and uh, took them off. I guess Twitter took them off, and I think Facebook took them off. I don't know why. I think they're very respected doctors. Uh, there was a, a woman who was spectacular in her statements about it, uh, that she's had tremendous success with it. And they took her They took her voice off. I don't know why they took her off, but they took her off. Maybe they had a good reason. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. I can only say that from my standpoint, uh, and based on a lot of reading and a lot of knowledge about it, I think it could have a very positive impact in the early stages. And I don't think you lose anything by doing it, other than politically, uh, it doesn't seem to be too popular. You know why? Because I recommend it. When I recommend something, they like to say, don't use it. The woman that you said was a great doctor in that video that you retweeted last night said that masks don't work and there is a cure for COVID-19, both of which health experts say is not true. She's also made videos saying that doctors make medicine using DNA from aliens and that they're trying to create a vaccine to make you immune from becoming religious. Well, maybe it's the so, same, maybe it's not, but I, I, can't, I can tell you this. That. She was on air along with many other doctors. They were big fans of hydroxychloroquine, and I thought she was very impressive in the sense that from where she came, I don't know which country she comes from, but she said that she's had tremendous success with hundreds of different patients. And I thought her voice was an important voice, but I know nothing about her. Masks don't work. Yeah, go ahead, last week, you said masks. Last week, well, real quick, last okay. week, you said Thank masks. you very much, Mr. everybody. President. Thank you. On that note, Mr. President, last night in tweets that were deleted by Twitter, uh, you said that Dr. Fauci misled the country about hydroxychloroquine. How so? No, not at all. I think I don't even know what his stance is on it. I, I was just, you know, he was at the uh, he was at the task force meeting a little while ago. Uh, I have a very good relationship with Dr. Fauci. You know, it's sort of interesting. We've listened to Dr. Fauci. I haven't always agreed with him, and that's, I think, pretty standard. That's okay. Uh, he did not want us to ban our this, — this put up the ban to China when China was heavily infected, very badly, Wuhan. Uh, he didn't want to do that, and I did, and other things. And he told me I was right, and he told me I saved tens of thousands of lives, which was generous. But it's — you know, I think it's fact. Then I banned — I did the ban on Europe. Uh, but I get along with him very well, and I agree with a lot of what he said. Uh, so, you know, it's interesting. Uh, he's got a very good approval rating, and I like that. I, it's good. Because remember, he's working for this administration. He's working with us, John. We, we could have gotten other people. We could have gotten somebody else. It didn't have to be Dr. Fauci. He's working with our administration. And for the most part, we've done pretty much what he and others, Dr. Burks and others, who are terrific, recommended. And he's got this high approval rating. So why don't I have a high approval rating with respect, and the administration, with respect to 
the virus. We should have a very high, because what we've done in terms of uh, we're just reading off about the masks and the gowns and the ventilators and numbers that nobody's seen and the testing at 55 million tests. We tested more than anybody in the world. I have a graph that I'd love to show you. I'm, perhaps you've seen it where we're up here and the rest of the world is down at a level that's a, just a tiny fraction of what we've done in terms of testing. So it sort of is curious. A man works for us, with us very closely, Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks, also highly thought of. And yet, they're highly thought of, but nobody likes me. It can only be my personality, that's all. Go ahead.